We're heading into the heart of bird migration season when many species head south for the winter, taking their cues in large part from the changing weather. But last week, many birds were headed in the opposite direction, totally because of the weather, specifically Hurricane Dorian. Now, back in the days when wayward ships would get caught in the eye of a hurricane, mariners would often report seeing lots of birds there. Fortunately, no ships got stuck in Dorian's eye, but as the hurricane moved parallel to the South Carolina coast last Thursday, the eye passed right over NOAA buoy 41004 and its associated weather instrumentation, about 40 miles offshore. And here's the data it gathered. This is over a 36-hour period. Sustained winds are in blue, gusts in red, both in knots, so hurricane force is about 65 knots. I put a black horizontal line there. And as the hurricane approached, you can see the winds increase and gusts go above hurricane force in the eye wall, then drop rapidly, almost going calm as the buoy got into the eye. And then winds increased rapidly again as the opposite eye wall passed over. Meanwhile, check out the air pressure, which is in green. As the eye approached, the pressure dropped quickly and bottomed out around 28.35 inches, which validated the estimate from the Hurricane Hunter aircraft. Then the pressure rapidly went back up as the eye moved away. All told, the buoy spent about three hours in the eye. This buoy also has cameras. Here's a picture from the northern eye wall about 8 a.m. that morning, the sea angry and foamy. Now here are two images from inside the eye, much less wave action, and do you see the birds? And finally, in the southern eye wall an hour later, as the big waves returned. We can also get a look at the birds in the eye using Doppler radar, but not with this standard reflectivity image. We need the capabilities of dual polarization, an upgrade done about five years ago. And one of the new products is the correlation coefficient, which measures the uniformity of the targets that the radar beam hits. The higher the value of correlation coefficient, the more uniform the targets. Here's the co uh, correlation coefficient looking at Dorian. Now the areas in red and maroon are high on the scale at the bottom, and that means the particles in those areas are all very similar. They're all raindrops. But look at the eye. Those blues and greens are farther down the scale and indicate that what's ever there has many different shapes and sizes. In this case, birds and probably some bugs as well. Now another radar product called differential reflectivity measures the shape of the targets by comparing their width to their height. For example, birds with their wings extended typically are much wider than they are tall. Here's that product for Dorian. Now the eye with all those birds really sticks out in a different color that's very high on the scale, indicating that the horizontal width of the targets was much bigger than their height, very suggestive of birds. Now this dual polarization technology has been installed at 160 government Doppler radar sites nationwide, providing in addition to correlation coefficient and differential reflectivity, another dozen new radar products to assist forecasters. Stay tuned. Our extended forecast is next.